From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. President Cyril Ramaphosa and Corabric CEO Nick Booth officially unveiled the company's new 800 million rand Questina brick factory in Gauteng earlier this month. Tasneem Bulbulia attended the launch. The factory was highlighted as a technologically advanced and environment-friendly brick manufacturing plant. Corabdic plans to have at least 26% of the factory's energy needs met by renewable energy sources, and there are also plans to reduce gas emissions from the kilns by at least two-thirds. Booth expands. So what we have here is a state-of-the-art factory from front to back. What we have is uh, an ability to control the process to a degree of uniformity and conformity that we never had before. So the level of automation, the level of, of PLC control means that we have a plant that uh, makes uniform product throughout the process. The, the specifics really go around the water addition. Uh, the, uh, the amperage on the extruder to give us a stiff column and the control of the stiffness of the column so the bricks are consistent in size because of the water absorption and the, and this, and the um, uniformity of the column of the brick. Um, and then we have automatic handling so it's not touched by human hands and every brick is packed exactly the same way uh, over and over and over again. And then on top of that we have uh, the energy savings in both the dryers and the kiln. So the, the dryers and the kiln are all the latest technology from Europe, which means we lower the carbon footprint of this factory compared to the old factory by some 50%. Then on top of that, we have an automatic offloading system, and then the bricks are uniform, so we can actually repackage them and then deliver them to the customer on site. The new factory has the capacity of 100 million bricks yearly, compared to the previous factory's capacity of about 78 million yearly, a 25% improvement. Booth outlines the construction timeline of the new factory. We started construction in 2019, just in time for COVID. Then we had a three to four month hiatus because of lockdown and COVID, and we had to send back all the German technicians. And we commissioned the factory in October 2021. He also explains the rationale for this new factory. The market is changing and the, and the requirement from the market is for a greener product, lower carbon footprint, more uniformity and ability to do bespoke products which we can do here in terms of glazing the product. And all those are, so this factory has been built in response to that market demand. On top of that, what this factory does is it gives us a better cost base uh, than, the, than the older factories and that means we can deliver this factory to outlying areas and, be, and give the outlying areas of South Africa, the rural areas, a product that is highly competitive and highly sophisticated which they would never have had access to before. Booth highlights the benefits this factory would provide. For the country it's a big investment so the first thing is to make a return on the investment. Until we made a return on the investment there's obviously not a major benefit to the company. Other than from a marketing point of view and, a, and as I said the product being so superior it gives us a better footprint in the market. Uh, in terms of the construction industry what we're supplying really is a more consistent product but also a product with which the industry can be creative. So it's a, a factory that plays more to the architects and the designers and the specifiers rather than to the construction industry. What's really important about this factory is it's a step change for South Africa and a, and, and a step change for the industry. So what it means is we have a factory here that will keep Corabric competitive for the next 20 or 30 years. President Cyril Ramaphosa lauded the project and the benefits this investment would provide for the country. This initiative, <coughs> the factory that we are launching today is part of the investment journey that we started uh, four years ago and uh, this year we held our fourth investment conference and I said that we want to move the commitments that were made at our investment conference to real projects that we can feel and touch and see. We did say that we wanted to see foundations being sunk, we want to hear the sound of bricks being laid, and also see cranes. And we said that we want to see factories being built from the commitments that were made, and we also wanted to see people being employed. And here today at Quastina, we're seeing the fulfillment, the real fulfillment of the investment commitment that was made at our investment conference. Here today we are seeing the results of the 800 million rand investment that Korobik pledged at the 
2019 Investment Conference. Now this investment is an example of the productive partnership that is being forged between business and government to grow our economy. And I'm particularly pleased that our Department of uh, Competition, uh, DTIC, Trade and Competition, is very much a part of this because that is where we want to see our government processes supporting business and enabling jobs to be created. The manufacturing sector is one of the priority industries in our economy and continues to play a vital and a pivotal role in the creation of employment opportunities. And the construction of Quastina, where we are today, told created temporary employment for some 1,000 people. Of particular significance is that 30 people from the surrounding community who participated here as bricklayers who were taught bricklaying right from scratch. Great companies are built by investing in people and we are greatly encouraged by Corabrick's efforts to empower its workers. I'm told, as uh, Deputy Minister Majola said here, that Corabrick has established a staff trust in which 26% of the company's share capital resides for workers. Now this is truly something that is praiseworthy. We're delighted to see that your company, Mr. Booth, is actually empowering its employees in the way that you have taken steps to do so. Now, this staff shareholding has fostered what I would call a common interest in the well-being and continued performance of the company, all the while providing a stable employment environment. Prima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.